Dear Derry, okay, so yesterday, which was Saturday, I know I usually record on Saturdays and I take the day off on Sunday, wait, no, how do I usually do it, why am I asking you guys, anyway, <clears throat> um, no, I usually do take Saturdays off, I think, so here we are on Sunday, and I'm not taking the day off, so, okay, maybe I've got nothing to apologize for, anyway, I, I felt for some reason really bad about not recording a Dear Dairy last night. But apparently, I usually take Saturdays off on that anyway. But it's a holiday weekend, so everything is all kinds of kerfuffled, and I have no idea what the hell is going on. So, let's do this one quick, as quickly as we can. This first part goes out to Seth Green. You know who you are. I would hope, because, you know, you're, you're kind of a little bit famous. Anyway, I was having this dream this morning. Don't panic. It wasn't that kind of a dream. It's, I don't have those kinds of dreams. As much as I might like to. Anyway drifting so it was more of a robot chicken kind of thing i guess and it was just like a cafeteria somewhere maybe on the death star i don't know but it was a bunch of stormtroopers and they're all eating exactly the same meal they're all having like you know the, the, the burger and fries and a shake except for one at the far end who's eat drinking like a diet dr pepper or something and in walks lord vader and he sees this last guy and he's like and he goes over and he just starts force choking him. And he's like, I find your lack of shake disturbing. Anyway, that's kind of where it... Did a little, so there, Merry Christmas. There's the thing that I... I don't know. You may have already done that. I don't know. Right. So, for the rest of you. Um, I was at the dog park earlier today. And uh, this couple that had their, like, their, their four-month-old little hairy chihuahua thing... Absolutely gorgeous little dog. Her name is Callie. Anyway, very, very timid. Um, but just adorable. Anyway, uh, the wife, we got to chattering back and forth and whatnot. And, and the wife eventually wound up asking me, how did I get into mascot work? And I realized that I don't think I've ever told you guys how I kind of initially got into it. Um... It was 1995, I believe, 1995, yeah, mid-1995, and one of my housemates, uh, he wasn't my housemate at the time, but anyway, he came to me, and he's kind of in a bit of a panic and asked if I would consider helping with an event at the Happy Hollow Park and Zoo in San Jose. I said, sure, yeah, no, no problem. I don't have a suit, though, and he's like, that's okay, we'll, we'll find one for you. So what we wound up finding for me was this kangaroo costume that was built for somebody who's significantly shorter than I am. Now, at the time, I had not yet begun to thicken up around the midsection, but I still have very wide shoulders. It's just harder to tell now that I'm mid, you know, thicker in the middle. Um, anyway, so the, the thing was built for somebody who was much smaller than me. He was probably a good six, seven inches shorter than me, and uh, probably a bit lighter, too. And even at the time, I was probably like 195, you know, or so. Um, so I put this thing on and if I stood up all the way, if I stood up straight, the bottom of the legs and the top of the shoes would separate because I was too tall for the costume. So the, the, there would be this gap where you could see my, my leg. So I had to keep kind of scrunched down a little bit so that it didn't, they didn't separate. And my arms were too long. And so if I extended my arms all the way, the sleeves would separate from the bottom of the gloves, and you could see my arm. And I was, so I had to keep my arms kind of pulled in. So I'm kind of inside this suit. Not exactly the most comfortable sort of situation to be in. But, uh, and then they go closing the, the Velcro that goes down the back. And I'm like, oh, because it's kind of squeezing in on me on all sides. Because it was designed for somebody who's a little bit smaller than me. Um, so I'm like, I... This thing is incredibly hot, and I can't breathe. Okay, this is not cool. I can barely move. I can barely breathe, and it's incredibly warm in here. And I'm not even outside doing anything yet. I'm not sure that why would... Why? And then they give me the head, and I put the head on. And it, if you've ever seen a Maryland's costume, Maryland's was the company that designed the suit. And if you go to their website and look them up, they're kind of low rent, you know, on their... And the kangaroo and the rabbit share the same head mold. Um, so I put this thing on. And 
I go, okay, now I'm, I'm inside. I'm thinking, now I can't see. I can't hear. What little breathing I can do now smells like Monterey Jack cheese breath because I'd had some sandwich just before I got there. Um, you know, it's just, there's really no ventilation, so it's just this this cheese breath smell that's hanging around. Always carry breath mints. Um, because you don't want to, you know, anyway, um, gas yourself out while you're doing the thing. Anyway, so, um, I'm thinking to myself, why in the world would anyone ever willfully do this? I cannot even imagine. I am never, never volunteering for something like this again. No way. I could not see any reason why someone would, would do this. It, I, mm, no. And so they're kind of shuffling me down the hallway as best they can when I can't really move my arms and legs too much without separating the things. And I can all I can see is like this vertical band of of bright light, which is the sunlight from between the the two doors that we're heading towards. And they open those doors, and it's just suddenly just lasers of sunlight you know, shooting through the the mesh eyes, and just just burning my retinas. And I'm like, now I really can't see. Oh God, why, why, why did I say I wanted to do this? Why did I ever think I wanted to do this? And I walk out, and the first kid that I encountered was a little girl. She's maybe five, six years old. And I kind of leaned down because I had to because the the head, it's sort of like if you if you've ever worn a hard hat before, it's got those little uh, adjustable, um, you know, headband things inside. Well, again, since this was for a smaller person, even when it was cranked out all the way out, it was still kind of clamping. It was just sort of sitting on top of my head, and not really down around my head. And either way, it was incredibly uncomfortable. But if I leaned f too far forward, the head would start to fall off. So I had to be very careful, you know, how much I moved. But I had to do that anyway. Anyway, so I leaned forward and I looked down at her. And she looks up at me. And she just, and she just lit up. And I was like, that's it. That right there. That is why people do this. That is, oh my God. I never want to do anything else. I just want to do this for the rest of my life. This is so freaking awesome. Kids everywhere were just, as soon as they realized I was a kangaroo, oh my God. It was, it was unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. Until I saw this one particular family. They weren't really, you know, a bad family. Didn't seem like they were sitting there in the little snack area eating their, their, their chili dogs and whatnot. And when they finished, they got up and they left. And they left all of their wrappers and the little, you know, recyclable cardboard things you carry your drinks in. They left everything just sitting there on the benches, just got up and walked away. And I was a bit pissed. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, and of course they couldn't see me and I couldn't say, hey, dickweed. I wouldn't want to do that anyway. But <laughs> nobody knew what the hell I was on about. So I walked over and I picked, I had to be very careful not to get chilly on my paws. Just sounds weird. Um, and so I'm, you know, balling up all the, the wrappers and everything. And I gather up all of the litter and I go over and I put it all in the trash can. And this little, I think it was a little boy, might have been a little girl, different little girl than the one that I was talking to before, said, let's clean up the park. And like a dozen kids start going around and grabbing every scrap of litter they can find and shoving them all into the trash cans. I'm like, I have immeasurable power. <laughs> I was thinking, man, can you imagine what you could do <laughs> with this kind of power? It would be amazing. And I, I remember saying at one point to my housemate, we should consider doing kind of a an anti-litter initiative, <laughs> having, you know, guys in fursuits picking up trash on the side of the road. I'm like, that might not be a good idea. Is people be like, what the hell? Yeah, I know. Be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Accidents all over the place. But that could be bad. Okay, maybe not, you know, on the side of the highway, but still, could be cool to, you know, volunteer to go out out of costume and clean up. Anyway, get one of those little signs, you know, this section, this mile of highway adopted by blah 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 blah. Anyway, so yeah, that was well, that was probably one of the happiest days of my mascotting life. 
also one of the saddest days of my mascot in life. I was, uh, it was later on that day, it was in the afternoon, and I was out in a meadow or something, just after several breaks and whatnot, and this little girl came up to me, she came running up to me, she was like, is that your pouch? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I kind of put my hands in the pouch, because that's what I did, I'd walk around with my hands in the pouch, like, a, like you know, you walk around with your hands in your pockets and whatnot. That's kind of how I do it. It also kept me from stretching my arms out too far and separating the things. So you find ways to, to mask your mannerisms to hide flaws with the suit. But anyway, um, she's like, is your baby in there? And I kind of was like, oh, nope, no baby. And she's like, oh, well, here, have some candy. She gives me three pieces of candy, which I take and I put in the pouch. And she kind of waves goodbye and she runs off. And a few minutes later, three other kids come running over. It's two girls and a very young boy who's the little brother of one of the little girls. The first little girl comes over and she's like, you know, do you have a baby in your pouch? I was like, you know, and I reached in and I pulled out a piece of candy, just one. And she was like, oh, candy. And I held it out to her. I wasn't going to eat it. You know, <laughs> so I held it and she took it. And the little girl comes up with her little brother and she says, you know, can I have some candy too? And I reach in and I try to grab one of the two pieces of candy, but I wound up grabbing both of them without realizing because I couldn't feel anything. And so I held them out and she just grabbed them and said, thank you, and ran off. And he steps up to me. But she took the last two pieces of candy. <laughs> and he's like, ah. and I'm like, oh no, oh God, <laughs> what do I do? And I, I couldn't tell him she's got it because you don't want to talk in suit, you know? And so I kept trying to tell him, you go, go talk to her. And he's just standing there like, I'm like, oh, God, no, don't do this to me. But eventually he ran off. He, I think he got it and, and, and ran off to get the candy from her. And I hope she gave him that other piece of candy. Because, oh, man, I feel like a prick if you didn't. Anyway, um, the other best day of my mascot life was considerably later. It was like eight years after that. And I was, uh, there was a Walmart, I think, over in Dixon, which is near Sacramento. And they were doing their grand opening, and they wanted Tony the Tiger there. So they had called Kellogg's and said, you know, can you send the suit over, and, and you know, we'll get somebody to fill it. And so they called us, because that's basically mascot contractors, you know. And so uh, I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it, no problem. And so I drove all the way out there, and I got there, and I, there was a point where I was on the cereal aisle, Big surprise, Tony the Tiger. Of course, I'm going to be on the cereal aisle at some point. And this young couple who had their baby, very young baby, um, they were at the other end of the aisle, and I was kind of strolling up, and uh, you know, just and the kid looks over and he sees me, and you know, I think I think uh, the mother, I think, was holding the kid, and the father was pushing the. They, they can't have been more than 27, you know I mean? They were very young parents. <laughs> By whose standards? 27? That's not a young parent. Anyway, um, <laughs> 16, that's a young parent. They were not that young. Um, so the kid sees Tony the Tiger and is just like, oh, oh. <laughs> reaching out like, oh my God, it's a giant teddy bear kind of thing. And I was like, that's cute. And so she puts the kid down so that he can crawl over to me. And... He stands up on his hind legs and starts walking towards me with his arms out. And I was like, oh, that's cute. And I kind of glance up and look at the parents. And they're just like, <gasps> and they are scrambling to grab their video camera. And I realize that was the kid's first steps. He took his first steps trying to walk to me in a mascot costume. I'm like, oh, my God. And they are scrambling. They finally got their camera out. And they're they, they're they're shooting this thing, and I was just like, whoa! <laughs> you know? And so the kid walked all the way over to me and took my hands, and mom was crying, and dad was just you know all over the place with that camera, and um, I eventually put the kid on my knee because as a mascot, you know, you you don't have a lot of tactile senses, so you don't want to hold the kids because if you drop them, oh, never hold a child. You can put them on your knee while you're kneeling down or something because they're very close to the ground and you can get a much more solid grip on them without having to worry about dropping them. Anyway, 
So I had him on my on my knees. <laughs> Father's trying to get him. He's like, look over. I think his name was Jacob. Anyway, you can like, look over here, Jacob. Look at dad. Look at dad. And the kid is just ah, ah, grabbing hold of Tony's whiskers and but he's just he's, he will not look at the camera. He's got a much higher priority to look at this this tiger. And uh I kept trying like look over there, look over look over you want to follow my finger. Look over there. No, no way, I'm not doing it. But yeah, that was also one of the greatest moments of my life. And here we are at 15 and a half minutes. I didn't want this to be this long. But it is. So I'm gonna let you guys go. And maybe, you know, in the future I'll I'll provide you guys with some more mascot stories. Some really good, some horrific. Um and uh, those are always amusing stories to tell. So until next time, which will probably be tomorrow night, I will talk to you guys later and be careless.